Welcome back to the next installment of my conversation with distinguished professor of social psychology, Lee Jessen. In the first episode of the series, Lee and I discussed the replication crisis in social psychology, wherein a disturbing amount of highly influential findings in the field were found to be non-reproducible. This created a credibility crisis within social psychology. Interestingly, this body-sized blemish on the field did not even include what may be the single most egregious instance of scientific malpractice in the history of academic psychology. I'm talking about the Stanford Prison Experiment. Possibly the most well-known, most talked about finding in the history of psychology, this study, quote unquote, was little more than narrative-driven art masquerading as science. Trying to build a prison. The replication crisis, some things didn't replicate, but to me, the biggest fraud in the history of psychology that I can think of is the Stanford prison experiment. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. So this thing, just for people, most people I think have heard of it, basically the way it was, how it worked was, uh, it happened at Stanford, main investigator, Philip Zimbardo, and they they had a bunch of, I think it was a mixture, or I think it was, they were either all Stanford undergrads or just yeah, people. I think it was Stanford. I think it was all Stanford undergrads. Right, right. And, and students, yeah. They had a, and they randomly assigned students to either be prison guards or prisoners. The prison guards work eight hour shifts around the clock in, in, in alternation, of course. It occurred at the Stanford University psych department in their basement. They basically retrofitted it to make it look as close to a, a prison as they mm. could. Um, the, the, the prisoners were actually to make it real they were picked up from their houses in cruisers they were you know processed and everything and the idea was the the, the point of the study was to find out to what degree uh, a person's behavior is dependent on their internal character versus uh their circumstances and what they found was that the the people within they had to stop the study in five or six days it was meant to go for weeks because many of the prisoners were becoming unbelievably depressed and despondent and um and kind of wigging out and a lot of the prison guards were becoming absolutely authoritarian and so it's just like wow all it took was five days to create nazis right but the thing is you we found out later like much later that the researchers zimbardo et al were basically telling the guards like come on you gotta go harder on them go harder on them and so to me this is not a science experiment this is this is like a, an art project. Yeah, theater right it's like yeah. theater right yeah yeah it's, yeah. The, yeah, it's the, the the zimbardo school of the performing arts you know <laughs> and, and to me like yeah. i don't you get blown out at least as far as i can tell until decades later and yeah that's right I was like, from what I could tell, there was minimal consequences to Zimbardo. Yeah, that's also correct. Why? Like this thing is one of the flagship studies in psych. If you were to like have a top five all time biggest studies in psychology history, I'm pretty sure that would be on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. So it, Zimbardo is pretty old. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's retired. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, what are they gonna do? So he didn't exactly make up data you know he kind of crafted the events and told a compelling narrative around them he kind of left some key details that turned out to be kind of important out you could make the case that that was unethical i think a lot of people would make the case that it was unethical but there's degrees of unethicality i mean just legally Littering is not the same as murder, you know, but they're both illegal, you know, so there, there's levels and extent and gray areas and stuff. So if I remember correctly, the report of the Stanford, Stanford Prison Study was not in any particularly prestigious journal. Oh! <laughs> And so, you know, it, it kind of took off because he was a great showman. You know, yeah. he really pushed it. You know, he made a movie about it. It was, you know, it was whole, yeah. you know presented and, in and, 10 and, zillion. Yeah, multiple languages. Like there was one in Germany, I guess, because like with the Jew, with yeah. the Jew, Germany, they right. had interest in that kind of like exploration. Right, right, yeah. right. And it, it, it told a story that was consistent with what many people, and especially many academics, kind of were predisposed to believe in. 
that, you know, that it was really, you know, people's external circumstances make them what they are much more than. Yeah, it kind of goes like a blank slate ideology in a way. In a big it, way. Which is really common throughout the left in general and, which, yeah. and, and academia. So yeah, it stopped at the brain. That was the one organ it didn't touch. And, it's very blank slate-ish. Um, yeah. so, and so it's not really like what consequence other than rejecting it, no, no longer including it in modern sort of retellings of foundational social psychology. What, what are the appropriate, you, you know, it's kind of like the best solution to bad science is better science. And that solution is being implemented, you know? So I, I'm not sure anything, like what else should, I, he did receive all these awards, partially because he got famous because of that, but he gonna rescind the award? I mean, maybe I wouldn't, I, you know, like maybe he didn't deserve the award in the first place, but I wouldn't, the whole rescind, the retroactively rescinding of awards because people did bad things, I generally don't think that's a good idea. Well, yeah, because so, it was fudged his, yeah, he didn't fudge his numbers, right. he fudged his numbers. Yeah, 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 yeah Whereas, that's yeah, right. With someone like Mark Hauser, he just got- Right, he's, he made he's, stuff up, yeah. So he's right. a kind of a, well, he's not really a counterexample to what I said earlier about how the baseball players and the grad students that are most, or the academics that are most likely to cheat are probably the ones that are struggling to get into the big leagues in the first place. <laughs> um, yeah. So Hauser was huge, he was at Harvard, but having said that, like, we don't know how long he was cheating for. He might have been cheating right. since he was a grad student for all we know, so we don't know. But yeah, he, he's not even in psych anymore. He, he just got blackballed completely. We are nearing the conclusion of the Lee Jussum series. In the next installment, I ask Lee if the strong leftist skew within the field of social psychology is suppressing inquiry. I also asked Lee what a conservative social psychologist, if there was one, might do differently than their left-sided colleagues. Subscribe so that you don't miss any of it.